This is some more random progress I'm making on my 1948 Willys CJ2A I call Grandpa's Jeep. I thought I'd show you this modification that I've done. This is the clutch the clutch rod in the stock form. It comes in with a rod like this, a straight rod with the you put cotter keys in the end and it fits in fits in here like this. But you can see on this rod how it wears. It wears through that and eventually it breaks and lets you down. Both sides are worn. So I switched mine over to this uh, this rod. Basically it's a rod with little yokes on the end. And, and so you just have this pin that doesn't, doesn't wear like the rod does. This pin, this pin right here. There's one there and there's one back here as well. Okay, now these two uh, tabs that they that it hooks into are slightly offset, so you can't see it very well on this camera. But I got a slight uh, a dog leg in this rod just so that the offset fits okay and it doesn't bind on those pins. So that's just a modification that I've made. A lot of you probably know that the CJ3A and the 3B and the M38 radiator was bolted on the sides to the grill okay but the cj2a was a, a low a bottom bolted uh, radiator and for some reason this m38 still had the radiator tabs on it um, this one was bent up we had to straighten it out and if you notice the the holes are really huge so what i'm gonna have to do is uh I'm just going to, I got a big washer that I'm going to weld on the bottom of that to make that hole smaller to hold the radiator tight from rattling around. I probably won't show you my welds because I'm a terrible welder and I'm going to be welding from below. But anyway, I'll show you when it's mounted. Well, I welded my washers in, my terrible welding, and my so-so grinding. The reason I decided to show this to you is that little M, or maybe a W, on both of these tabs. I don't know if that stands for M38 or what, but they're there. I thought I'd give you a little tour of the underside of Grandpa's Jeep. It looks pretty rugged under here. A lot of people may have noticed that the driver's rear corner kind of squats down and it gives it extra lean, and that's because of this right here bent hat, hat channel and the whole corner is pressed down. Uh, that happened in my accident a few years ago. You can read about that on the CJ2A page if you want. Just a short editorial, uh, sleeping and driving are not a good combination. Um, this this uh, body mount right here is broken off. I'll see if I can weld that back in. The other ones are broken off and gone, but this, these corners are just so uh, bent up and mangled that I'm not going to do much with them. Uh, they are what they are. That's the nature of Grandpa's Jeep. There's a this piece of this brace right here is broken. I'm going to attempt to fix that. It's really sad the way I weld though, so uh, who knows what it'll look like, but I'm going to try to fix that. Um, other than that, I'm, I'm hoping to be able to just make this bent body fit on the, the new straight frame. This is a before shot. I'm going to do some pressure washing underneath Grandpa's Jeep. I normally wouldn't bother, but my welder can't help me for a few days, so... I'll uh, power wash the bottom, knock most of the big chunks off. Doesn't really look that much better, but the Moab mud is mostly gone. Now my welder has time. Because I'm such a pathetic welder, whenever I can, I try to get somebody else to help me with my welding. And this is my cousin, Don Fuller. He's a great welder. And he is always so helpful when I when I ask him to. Or oftentimes he finds more stuff that needs to be fixed or welded while he's 
while he's in there. Oh yeah, now we're sending. You hear that? Here's a new brace going in. They're clamping it all together and then going to be looks like spot some, welding it. Looks like some spot weld on this side. A few side. spot welds are coming through the other side, but that'll that'll rub off no problem. Looking good. Dave's doing the final burn in on the patch right here. He says it's a little bit difficult because the original metal is getting so thin that it's hard to not blow through it all the time. But he's making it happen and doing a great job. I've got these two fenders now pretty much repaired and I'm just trying to decide how much paint to put on them because the whole point of this exercise with these fenders was to preserve the patina. This particular one, we replaced this whole inner fender here with one from a different Jeep. This one happens to be kind of pink and with a little green and that on it. I don't know, I'm kind of thinking I might leave it pink. I need to put some paint on the welds and stuff so they don't rust, but this one over here, we've replaced the brace. Dave got it welded in for me and there's a patch on the other side that I need to to put some paint on. These I'm going to hit with uh, like a red oxide paint and then maybe a little brown. I'm going to try and recreate the patina a little bit and we'll see how it turns out. So that's what I'm doing now. Okay, usually when I do my fake patina I use the base coat of this Rust-Oleum uh, Sandable Primer and it's uh, red, just red. I went to my local auto parts store where I, where I always have gotten this stuff and they switched brands over to this Apple Sandable Primer. It also is red, but if you can look at the caps, it's a totally different color. Now I used some of the Rust-Oleum on this part. Now, can you see, the lighting's not too good here tonight, but it actually matches pretty good the old uh, base coat that was on this fender, which was the Luzon red color before they somebody painted over it with this blue color. Anyway, um, it matches pretty good. So I'm gonna try this Upple, U-P-O-L, red, and it looks like it's a totally different color, and I, I may be on a quest tomorrow to find some more Rust-Oleum. The local auto parts store changed brands on me. So I'll show you what this looks like in a second. Well, I'm not sure the camera can show this, but this, st this stuff is quite a bit more red. Right here is where I had the Rust-Oleum red primer, and then down here is where the other red is, so it's quite a bit more red. But I think I'll go with it. I bought the can, you know. It's just fake patina. Um, I'll throw a little brown over it and then maybe a little blue and see what it looks like. So I looked in my paint cupboard for some brown and this is what I found. This is espresso satin. So we'll see what happens if I throw a little bit of that, kind of mist it over the top of this red. The brown toned the espresso, I guess is what it was called, toned the red down quite a bit and kind of turned it back into more of a rusty color. Um, I got a lot of patches on these fenders that I, I'm trying to make look kind of patina. So 
A few years ago I had a paint store mix up this blue for me. Uh, basically I took them a paint chip off the, that body there and they mixed up this blue. I don't have very much left. But I'm just going to throw a little bit of it on whatever's left and maybe I'll have to go get another can mixed up. We'll see how it turns out. And then what I'll do is tomorrow I'll just give it a little light touch up with the sandpaper and uh, kind of hopefully make it look a little bit more patina. Well, the paint store told me that it takes a day for them to get a can of paint mixed up, special mix, so onto the body. Okay, today's the day I'm going to start trying to fit the body back on the frame. I had to move my wife's car out in the driveway. I'm going to move the, move the rolling frame back. Then I'll move the body over here into her parking spot and move, move the frame up and then I'll push the body over and see if I can fit it on. So here we go. Doing this job by yourself is a little bit tricky. Got the body up on the ch cherry picker. I'm going to push the frame back underneath it. I may have to lift it up a little bit higher to get it on, which I'm getting close to the max on the cherry picker, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to get it. I had to reposition my straps to get a little better balance on the body. It was tipped too far forward. Now it's about level, so I'm going to start pushing the frame One of back. the tricky parts here is getting the steering column through the right hole. And then you have to let it down a little at a time as you push push the things together. So the next tricky part is what, seeing if you can get all the shift handles through the hole. I think I've mostly got them. Once again, doing this by yourself is a challenge. We're getting close though. Well, I'm calling it a day. The uh, body is all, the tub is all set down on the frame. All the bolt holes lined up great and I got the bolts all in. Uh, just, there's one. Got the ones in the back here as well. They're all in. Uh, everything lined up pretty great. And it's sitting down on the frame. So now I just got to connect all the, this stuff up and then get those fenders finished up that I showed you the kind of patina job I was starting on. I'm still waiting for the paint to come from the painters, but I'm pretty happy with the progress. I'm going to wrap this up and say thanks for watching and uh, hopefully the next time I'll have it all together and running.